Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary Stories for Kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Beware of the Mutant Burritos the Megacade Expo was coming up at the end of the week. My friends would be there, and I was grounded. I could still see my mother waving my history test at me, saying, Look at this grade! It's because of those video games, Nick Jacobs! It wasn't. It's just that the past doesn't interest me, only the future. I'm a science and technology kid. The way I see it, playing video games online with my friends was a skill. Mom would never understand that. She was determined to make me have the most long, most miserable week of my life. This included not being online at all. She changed the Wi-Fi password before going to work, leaving me to realize how quiet the house was without the sound of a virtual battle booming from out of my headset. The sudden knock at the front door and the simultaneous ringing of the doorbell sent me falling backwards out of my computer chair. We never got visitors this late. I haven't been old enough to stay at home by myself for very long, but I was old enough to know that I was not supposed to answer the door at all for anyone I didn't know. As I crept slowly down the stairs, I tried to peek out the side window to catch a glimpse at the front porch without them seeing me. I moved in the shadows to stay in stealth mode, just like I learned from, you guessed it, video games. I could see the faint outline of something human-shaped, all right. They were tall and skinny and wore a baseball cap. They were holding what looked like some sort of package. Nice try, Mr. or Mrs. Kidnapper. I wasn't about to fall for that. It was too late for deliveries. Instead, I just stayed low and watched until they moved away towards the curb. The whole time, my finger was ready to dial 911 on my phone. Something was wrong with the way they moved. Their steps were stiff and robotic. It looked so inhuman that it sent chills up the back of my neck. I crept to the door and opened our mail slot ever so slightly to make sure the coast was clear, then took the package in the kitchen to open and examine its contents. It was a clamshell box that was stapled inside of a plain brown paper bag. I instantly knew what that meant. This was a food delivery. Maybe Mom had felt so bad about coming down on me for one bad grade earlier that she ordered some grub to be sent to the house. I thought she would have at least texted me and give me a heads up, but maybe she was too busy or something. I sure wasn't going to question it. I was starving. I could tell by the smell that it was one of my favorite foods of all time. It was definitely a burrito. I quickly went to retrieve some eating utensils. With a fork in one hand and a knife in the other, I was ready to dig in. Only when I returned to the food container, it was open, and inside sat a sheet of foil with only a puddle of red sauce in the middle. No food. I immediately suspected my dog Chester as the culprit. However, the eight-year-old German Shepherd sat in his giant dog bed by the back door, inattentive to the world around him. You're the worst guard dog of all time, I told him. 
The fact remained, he surely didn't take my burrito, and I didn't hear the plop of it hitting the floor. Then we both turned toward a squishing noise that sounded like a wet sponge crawling around. At the base of the kitchen table was a trail of refried beans, and following the trail with our eyes, we both had to do a double take at what me and Chester were witnessing. The burrito was inchworming its way across the kitchen by itself. Chester growled, drawing attention to us. The food creature lifted its front end and opened a hole that I assumed was supposed to be a mouth. Rows of sharp tortilla chip teeth were revealed, along with a snake-like lettuce tongue. Sour cream saliva dripped down its sides and shot out in small drops. I wanted to believe my mind was deceiving me, that boredom had finally gotten the best of my game-addicted brain and caused me to project the weird kinds of virtual creations seen in indie titles. But somehow I knew this was happening. It was fight or flight before this thing attacked me or my dog. It was starting towards us, giving little time for second thought. I dashed to the cabinets closest to the sink. I grabbed a metal lid that belonged to our biggest pot. This was my shield. Weapon-wise, it looked like my best choice was an electric carving knife. You came to the wrong house, I yelled at the monstrosity that was unhinging its tortilla mouth wide enough to swallow Chester whole. I may have failed history, but I wouldn't let my dog get eaten. I charged it. The cord on the electric knife wasn't long enough to turn on, but I had another plan. Or at least I thought I did, until I slipped on the trail of refried beans that I had forgotten about. Down I went the back of my head smacking the hard tile floor and causing me to see double. The creature looked even more intimidating from this view, like a more ugly two-headed slug. I could have even swore I heard a raspy, victorious laugh escape from its insides. It tried to bite at me when it got close enough, but thankfully I deflected its attack with my shield just in time. It recoiled and got ready to strike again. My timing was better. I slashed an opening in its midsection with the electric knife, and ground beef poured from inside. I gave my best battle cry before delivering the final blow. The creature was faster than I anticipated this time. It bit down on the edge of my blade and held it in place. The maneuver was expected, but I wasn't giving up. I held my ground, not letting the enemy intercept my weapon. Instead, I let it hold on as I dropped my shield and used my free hand to open the microwave behind me. Then I did a quick pivot and swung the creature into the opening, slammed the door closed and turned it on the highest setting. It screamed in defeat for one minute and four seconds before shriveling up and becoming incapacitated. My brain was scrambling to decide where to go from here. Was it over? And if it was, what do I do with this thing's remains? My solution was to clean this up and finish it off in the fire pit out back. No one was going to believe this. I survived being attacked by one of my favorite foods of all time, and I didn't even get to capture the moment on video. Maybe it was better that I keep this to myself and never bring it up before it was decided that I was out of my mind and they put me away forever. Once I realized that the burrito monster wasn't getting back up, I grabbed the paper bag and container it came in. All of it had to go, and I had to clean the spoils of war from the floor and walls. I started by scooping the thing out of the microwave and putting it in the paper bag. When I opened my back door, a man in a black tuxedo was waiting for me. He pointed at the bag. Good evening, sir. I believe you accidentally got a delivery that was supposed to come to us. I had spent enough time on message boards to see where this was going. I knew everything about the so-called men in black. I did, I said. I'm afraid I had to dispose of it. It tried to attack me and eat my dog. You're going to take me to a facility and erase my memory, aren't you? The man smiled. It was surprisingly warm and friendly. Judging by what we know about you, how does convincing your mother to let you accept weekend passes to the Megacade Expo in exchange for your silence sound? I shook his hand. That was the best deal I had ever made. 
Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors Scary Stories for Kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.